This is a seven segment display which I wrote in JavaScript for use within web pages. And in this video, I'll firstly show it in action on this page, and later on we'll look at the source code. On the left of the page, we have a number of controls which can be used to set the properties of the display. And the first of these is number of digits, which is currently set to 8. So if I take it up to, say, 10, you can see that the number of digits increases, and also the height is adjusted to maintain the correct width to height ratio. The next three controls are for decimal places, and number of decimal places is currently set to 2 with a decimal point type of fixed. But we can also set the decimal point type to floating, which will display however many decimal places are in the value being displayed. Using this control here, we can set the value itself, either with the up and down arrows, or I can also type in a number directly. Under that, we have six radio buttons to set the colour scheme to one of the six built-in schemes. It's currently on LCD, but we can also choose from green, orange, blue, sky or red. We can also set the three colours, background colour, unlit segment colour and lit segment colour by clicking one of these buttons, which, as you can see, they open the browser colour selector. Lastly, we have a start button, and if I click on it, it starts a timer which increments the value by one every second, as you can see. Now, this video is actually based on a blog post, which includes links to download the source code as a zip file, and there is also a link to the GitHub repository. So, if you want to look at source code, or if you just want to use this display in your own projects, then please click the link. Let's look at the source code, which I have open here in Atom. This is the HTML for the page which we've just been looking at, and most of it consists of mundane input elements, so I'll scroll past those to get to the important bit down the bottom. The seven segment display uses SVG, so to include it on the page, you need to add an empty SVG element, which has to have an ID. And of course, you can also set any styles and attributes you like. Also notice down the bottom, I've included two JavaScript files. One is for the display itself, and the other one uh, creates and controls the display. This is a JavaScript file which is attached to our HTML page to create and control the display, and at the top we have an object which contains the various properties needed by the page. In on load, we create an instance of the display and pass the ID of the empty SVG element to the constructor, and then call a function called setEventHandlers. Now, the display is controlled by setting its properties, the number of digits, colours, value and so on. So, for each of the input elements on the page, we need to add an event handler, which picks up the value from that element and sets it as a property value on the display. Most of these are quite simple, so I've done in one line, but a couple are more, uh, slightly more complicated, so I've cre uh, created separate functions for those. One of these is set decimal point type, and the other is set color scheme. Right down the bottom of this file, there is a function called start, which is the event handler for the start button. And when you click that button, the uh, function creates a 1000 millisecond timer, which increments the value by one, which as you saw when it started to count up from zero. Let's look at the 7 segment display itself, which is implemented as an ES6 class. If you are not familiar with classes in JavaScript, people have been trying to simulate, probably from the very early days, the class functionality of languages such as C++ and Java, usually not very successfully, but ES6 formalised the process. It doesn't provide everything you get from other OAP languages, but it is a big improvement. Firstly, let's look at the constructor, which is called when the object is created, and notice we pass the constructor the ID of the SVG element. These two objects here are used as enumerations for two of the properties, colour schemes and decimal point types. Further down, we have a number of variables which hold property values and which are initialised to default values. This array here holds the segment on-off patterns for digits 0 to 9, and also for blank and the minus sign. The value displayed is of course a number, but to make it easier to handle later on, it's converted to a string padded to the left with spaces, and that is initialised here. 
Finally, in the constructor, we call three functions to actually set up the display. The first is set height, which sets the height of the SVG element based on its width and the current number of digits. Uh, create segments, create seven segments for each digit we need to display. And finally, set segment colors, sets the colors to display the current value. Next up, we have properties, the first two being color schemes and decimal point types. They are gettable only and return the enumeration objects, which I mentioned earlier. The rest of the properties represent some aspect of the display's appearance, so in the setters we need to apply the new values. For example, with background colour, the colour is stacked directly within the setter, but for lit segment colour and unlit, unlit segment colour, we call a separate function, which we'll see in a moment. The first function in the class is set height, which sets the height depending on the width and number of digits and calculate value display string creates a string representation of, of the value depending on decimal point type and it also pads it to the left with spaces. In create segments we create a set of seven segments for each digit. Now as each segment is in a different position and has a different shape those positions and shapes have to be hard coded for each segment. As I scroll down you can see top, top left, top right, middle bottom left, bottom right and bottom. They are created as paths which are added to the SVG and right at the bottom here we create a decimal point. The final function is set segment colors which for each digit sets the segment colors to show the number although if the digit happens to be unchanged we don't need to redraw it so we check for that first. And finally down the bottom we draw the decimal point. So, that's the end of the tour of my JavaScript 7 segment display. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is also a blog post, and I'll put a link to that in the description. If you click on the link, there are links to download the source code as a zip file, and also a link to the GitHub repository. Uh, if you use the display in your own project, or if you improved in some way, then please let me know.